Today I want to talk about yeah, A Perfect Place. You did the film score. Mm -hmm. First film score you've ever done, correct? True. Well, how did you meet the director, uh, Derek Skokera? Er, I used to shop. He used to have a, a laser disc store. Oh man, remember those? <laughs> yes. And I was a big laser disc guy. And he had a, a store in my neighborhood, and I used to go shop there a lot. And so, you know, I, I, being a regular customer, I got to know the people who who, who worked there, and uh, I got to meet him. And and he, had, it was really a great story. It was so great that. Of course, it went out of business. I was a fan of what he was doing, and he said, you know, I also write scripts, and he sent me a few scripts, and hard for me to tell what a movie is going to be like from reading it on paper, but uh, I don't know, there was a kinship there, and, and when he said, I'm going to make a short film, uh, I want you to score it, you know, who was I to argue? Short film, black and white, beautifully shot. Uh, almost like a play in that there's just you know very few characters and very few sets but uh, the strength is in the the, the writing the, the best part of it is is it starts out with you know guys playing a card game and they basically you know quote unquote kill their friend who was cheating <laughs> or, they, or so they thought and uh, I, I don't know somehow even though maybe we wouldn't be driven to those lengths, you can you can relate. If you were to kill someone, all these questions would come up. Is there an incinerator in the building? No, no incinerator. What about a garbage disposal? What? It's not as easy as, you know, Scorsese would have you believe. Right. You kill somebody, you drop some lie on them, you know, you, you bring them out to the suburbs. A film like that, it was pretty renegade. You know, I think they got, you know, barely got the permits that they needed to do it, and a lot of it was done, you know, at night. It's kind of got like a little film noir element to it, just a little... Yeah. I mean, he gave me, you know, he gave me some direction that was a little hard to follow. Well... Just because he was aiming really high, he was like, I want a main thing that sounds like Elmer Bernstein. And, you know, you don't just press a button and... And become an Elmer Bernstein. <laughs> That's like saying, you know, let's, let's, I got an idea for a street fight and I want you to be Mike Tyson, you know. One of the best directions I think he gave me was, and from the outset he said, I want one major theme and I want you to come up with uh, a, a, a zillion variations, um, including the source music, including, uh, you know, like I said, you know, a 78 record, have that theme in there. When, when the guys are in a car, you know, flipping the radio dial, I want you to write a, a piece, you know, that sounds like that. So, in, in a sense, it was doing a score and the source music kind of in one. It, ultimately, uh, if you're a guest, you gotta know when to just go, okay. Yeah. <laughs> It's like being a guest in someone's house. You gotta know when to step down. Uh, yes, I'll leave now. I pissed on your couch. It's okay. I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> you know, I'm beginning to think you are seriously disturbed. And actually, the director made some great suggestions. He was like, hey, if we're gonna do this, why don't you do a... It was his idea to do a vocal version of, of the main theme. Right. Kind of almost as a you know, a single or whatever. It never got used in the film and it was a complete afterthought. But um, that was his idea. And, and that was that, that sort of, you know, twist theme that I did with vocals. And right. it's probably, you know, it's one of the standards. It's a fun track, yeah. Beer break. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, I know another thing you have uh, coming out in 
2008 is a bionic commando. You do the voice of one of the lead characters. Tell me a little bit about how you got involved in that. I mean, I know you've always been a big video game enthusiast. Yeah, that, that sort of dropped out of the sky, and uh, I think it, it, it sort of came about because I did a couple of other video game voiceovers, and once your name is in the hat, people kind of take you more seriously. So I got the call. And I was familiar with the old, you know, it's a remake of a, of a, of a you know, an 80s Nintendo game. What character do you play? The main guy. Um, the head honcho. Nathan. And basically what I did was... Any favorite lines you like to say from the game? Any that you can remember? Lines, but I will tell you that, that my best uh, point of reference was I was trying to channel Henry Rollins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks for your time, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. And go to ipecac.com and suicidegirls.com. And uh, yes, it's been a pleasure with you, Mike. Thank you very much. Ching ching. Ching ching. <laughs> Mink ya. Thank you. <laughs> Finish your eel. Be a good girl. I'm finishing my eel. Hey, eat your eel. Dream, a dream, a dream of a ride.